We take you to a showdown between a self-proclaimed white nationalist and hundreds of protesters. Richard Spencer, founder of the so-called alt-right movement, which has gained national attention in recent months, became infamous when video went viral of his supporters hailing Trump with Nazi salutes. When he accepted an invitation to speak on a college campus, the community stood against him. Emotions bubbling over at Texas A&M, with the university becoming an ideological battleground. Last night, thousands came together to protest one man. White people are ruling right now. White people have a tremendous amount of power. Richard Spencer, the man who coined the term alt-right, who critics are now calling a suit and tie racist. Hail Trump! Hail our people! Hail victory! Last month, this video of Spencer at a so-called alt-right conference exulting in Trump's win. Going viral after some in attendance went as far as throwing the deeply disturbing Nazi salute, propelling him into the national spotlight. A white country designed for ourselves and our posterity. His movement, he says, boosted by Trump's victory. You went from toiling in obscurity, basically, to suddenly all this notoriety. I think Donald Trump slingshotted our movement into fame. We traveled to Texas to examine the roots of the new generation of racial extremism, meeting up with the 38-year-old just before his next event. You gave a speech, it went viral on the Atlantic. At the end, you said, hail Trump, hell victory. You laugh. Why? Yes, because that was said in a spirit of irony and exuberance. What is exuberant about genocide? What is fun Jeez. about mass murder? I said, hail Trump, but I held up a glass of whiskey. There are some people, a half dozen people in the audience or so who gave a Roman salute. Where it's not a Roman salute, you know that. It is a Nazi is... party salute. Are you trying to normalize racism? Uh, yes, I'm trying to normalize racism, as you call it. Absolutely, I'm trying to normalize my ideas, our ideas of the alt-right, yes. I do not want the alt-right to be a fringe movement. I want the alt-right to be a dominant movement. He claims he's not a white supremacist or a racist, but it is difficult to understand his inflammatory rhetoric in any other way. You told Mother Jones that Hispanics and African Americans have lower average IQs than whites and are more genetically predisposed to commit crimes. Yes. That is a classic tenet of white supremacy. It's also an empirical fact. The fact is... That they're genetically predisposed? That is not a fact. When, when you study, say, average intelligence around the world and you keep getting the same answer, at some point you're going to have to look towards genetics as a cause. What do your parents think of your ideas? Uh, they think I'm a bit crazy. They do. <laughs> I mean, in, it's in actually that, strained your relationship, really. according to you. A lot of things have been strained because of my activism, yes. It's been very difficult. Businesses in Montana have banned you. Restaurants sure. have said you can't come. Sure. A I've been banned from most of Europe. Texas A&M denounced his views but decided not to ban him, citing free speech. He was invited by a former student hoping to spread his incendiary views. His presence today, not without considerable controversy. <laughs> Uh -huh. Go home, Spencer. We don't want you. That's right. what he's saying. I'm here. I Do think that's good. Do you feel like a pariah, though? Do you feel like a skunk at the garden party? A skunk at the garden party? No. What kinds of things were you shouting? Uh, I want people to not to see through their, their lies and their misguidance. They are not alt-right. They are not racial realists. They are neo-Nazis. Look, they're just like... They're, they're, they're gutter punks. I mean, it's just... They're not good people, let's be honest. Hey, could I borrow a marker? Yes, sir. Thanks. With our cameras rolling, Spencer further defies his detractors, writing on a wall the students set up to voice messages against him. We trigger the world. You enjoy being a provocateur. Yeah, who wouldn't? Spencer and his supporters feel emboldened by a political landscape he never dreamed of. Thank you. Thank you very much. What was your reaction the moment you knew that Trump won the presidency? Uh, it, it was a kind of miracle. If someone told me two years ago are you, are that you... Donald Trump would be the alt-right hero and you, you, he would be president, I, I would be like, what you know, ridiculous movie are you talking about? Like, this is not real life, but it is real life. Although the president-elect publicly distanced himself from the alt-right in an interview with the New York Times. Alt-right, yes. you say you coined the phrase. Yes. What does it mean to you? The identity politics for white people in the 21st century. Look. 
I, I think the alt-right has gained a great deal of ground precisely because we are provocative and precisely because, to, to use bad language, we don't give a some level. The term alt-right is really nothing more than a rebranding of white supremacy for the digital age. But I don't think anybody should be fooled by uh, what, you know, what it is at its core, and that is white supremacy. According to the Southern Poverty Law Center, there has already been a spike in hate crimes and harassment in the days after the presidential election. More than 800 reported in 47 states. They believe the first line of defense is spotlighting what they consider dangerous hate speech. Richard Spencer, he's the head of the alt-right, the godfather of the alt-right. And quite frankly, Mr. Trump ran a, a racially divisive campaign. So I think the media has an obligation to cover Richard Spencer. <laughs> And within shouting distances, this pretty rowdy group of protesters. It's a coalition of student groups and anti-hate groups who say he has every right to say what he says, but it's their First Amendment right to protest. This is us uniting together to have fun and come together. Spencer says his ideal world is an all-white ethnostate where the races are segregated with a peaceful ethnic cleansing. Would here. I be allowed to live in your ethnostate? No. You wouldn't, but you could have your own ethnostate. That's, That's very it. gracious of you. <laughs> well, so this would be actually a new type of society, a big empire for all European, the whole European family. How do you remove 100 million blacks, Latinos, Asians from your ethnostate? The ethnostate is an ideal. It's not going to happen tomorrow morning. You also were quoted as saying that it could be horribly bloody and terrible. That that's a possibility. Of course that's a possibility. I think the current paradigm that we are living under is going to lead to blood and tears, period. You're predicting a race that. war, basically. I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but yes, I do think that it will be a crack up predominantly on racial lines. As night falls, several hundred people have gathered for Spencer's talk. We're about 10 minutes away from Spencer taking the stage, and sure enough, he has a packed house. I would expect some fireworks. Across the street, the university's president signs that very wall that Spencer wrote on earlier in the day. Well, I believe we live in a world where the differences actually make us stronger. And he, along with a series of musicians, students, Aggies United, literally drowning out his hateful message at the nearby football stadium. When there's fear and hate inside us, when our differences deny, divide us, let love lead the way. I love you all. I'm referring to people like you. Back at Spencer's event, the vast majority of his audience indeed was there in opposition, with multiple outbursts and clashes erupting during his speech. <laughs> Security had to intervene to de-escalate several volatile exchanges. At one point, police in riot gear entered the student union, but none of the hostility took Spencer off message. Because this is our goddamn country. At the football stadium, it is this soaring message of tolerance and diversity that unites the Aggies and drowns out that hateful and unwelcomed in next door.